Hello and welcome back everybody. We are looking at reaction rate mechanisms. And it's probably good that we're doing this one as a podcast because it's kind of a doozy. It's good to, to maybe look at it a couple of times if you have an opportunity. This is a, we make a lot of assumptions with this particular practice problem. So kind of follow along, look at the idea. We're more looking at learning how to do a process than anything else here. Um, we have a, an overall equation. NO plus O2 yields 2NO2. We have two possible mechanisms. So we're trying to sort of analyze the mechanisms to see which ones would be feasible to come up with the rate law and what that rate law would be. So first of all, let's look at mechanism A. We can write from the elementary steps, we can write a rate law for step one and for step two. So that would just be for step one, rate equals K times concentration of NO times concentration of O2 by molecular reaction. For step two, rate equals K times concentration of NO3 times concentration of NO. I have an issue with step two because NO3 is an intermediate. So it really shouldn't be in our rate law if it doesn't show up in the reactants or the products. If we make a couple of assumptions, then we can deal with this. So if we assume that the second step of the is the rate determining step or the slow step, then the first step must be fast and reversible, which tells me that anything that comes before the slow step is at equilibrium. Again, meaning the forward rate has to be equal to the reverse rate. So I'm going to rewrite the mechanism for step one, both forward and backward. So the rate for the forward, Kf equals concentration of NO times concentration of O2. And the rate backward, Kr. Now I'm going in the reverse direction is concentration of NO3. By the definition of equilibrium, these two are then equal to each other. So K forward times NO times O2 equals K reverse times NO3. Based on the fact that these rate, rates are the same, the rate forward, the K forward, and the K backward are also the same, so they would basically cancel out. That would become one, which would allow us to say that the concentration of NO times the concentration of O2 should be equal to the concentration of NO3. Then we can use this information plug it in where we had the NO3 here, we can replace it and fix our rate law for step two. So it would become rate equals K and now instead of NO3, we would have NO times O2 and then we had another NO here. So then we would need to combine them. It would be K NO squared O2. All right, so that's where we'll stop for this part. All right, we want to do something fairly similar to test reaction mechanism B. 2NO yields N2O2 and N2O2 plus O2 yields 2NO2. Okay, another possible option. First, we need to write the rate for step one. Rate equals K times NO squared. For step two for that one, we have rate equals K times N2O2 times O2. Again, we have another intermediate in there. We can't have that present in our reaction, so we need to show that the first step is fast and at equilibrium. And if we assume that, then we can make the same change as we did before. Rate forward for that reaction would be K 
NO squared, again for step one. Rate reverse, K reverse, times N2O2. Based on, again, the definition of equilibrium, rate forward equals rate reverse, we can show that NO squared should equal concentration N2O2. Again, we can substitute in to fix the sort of messed up spot here where we had the intermediate. So the fixed rate law for step two becomes rate equals NO squared, we replace the N2O2, times O2. So if we look at the two options that we have, we came up with this for mechanism A, we came up with this for mechanism B. They gave us the same overall mechanism. If we assumed that the second step was the slow step, if the first step was slow, the two mechanisms give different rate laws. If the second step is slow, they both would give the same rate law. We can't identify which one is actually correct without experimentally determining which intermediate gets formed during the reaction. So don't freak out. Watch it again. There are several practice problems that are similar. That's why I wanted you to be able to see the podcast without me, even without me being here. So good luck.